Welcome back, Deep in Word family. It is day 24 of our Bible study review. Okay, so today's chapters, they're 21 through 23 of Exodus. Do you remember yesterday where we left off? Okay, Yahuwah Elohim is imparting his law to his people, Israel, which is a picture of the bride, the husband and the bride, all right? He is giving some vows, all right? And he has yet to get her yes and amen, okay? So he gives the 10, but the children of Israel could not stand to hear his voice. His voice was terrifying. So they asked Moshe, they said, can you please go up, get the rest of the instructions because we can't take this voice. If he says one more word, we might fall to our grave. So our Yahuwah Elohim is a perfect gentleman. He says, yes, sure. I'll get Moshe to be your mediator since you can't handle my voice. Throughout these chapters, you're going to see more specific laws that go hand in hand with the 10, okay? They are not separate from the 10, they complement the 10. Now he knows that the children of Israel came out of slavery. He knows they still got some ratchet tendencies and they might be looking for some loopholes within the system. He ain't playing those games. So what I'm gonna do throughout chapters 21 through 23 is I'm gonna go through a few specific details and show you that they go hand in hand with the 10 commandments. Chapter 21, let's start right here in verse one. And these are the right rulings which you are to put before them. This is Yahuwah speaking to Moses, telling him this is what you are to say to the children of Israel, since they can't handle my voice. When you buy a Hebrew servant, he serves six years, and on the seventh he goes out free for naught. Now most people think that this right here is supporting slavery, but this is not what that is talking about. Do you remember that Abraham had a servant named Eliezer. And that servant is the one who went out to get a bride for Isaac. If they had a debt, you purchased their debt and they worked for you for six years. After six years, whether they worked enough to pay off the debt, you let them go free. That's what this is talking about. I'm going to read a few more examples between verses 12 and 16. So let's start right here in verse 12. He who strikes a man so that he dies shall certainly be put to death. That goes right along with the commandment that says, do not murder, thou shall not kill. Verse 13, but if he did not lie in wait, but Elohim delivered him into his hand, then I shall appoint for you a place where he is to flee. He's saying if this wasn't premeditated. Verse 14, but when a man acts presumptuously against his neighbor to kill him by treachery, you are to take him even from my altar to die. Sounds a lot like the death penalty, right? If someone takes an innocent life, then their life is taken. Where do you think our law system came from? Right here. Verse 15. He who smites his father or his mother shall certainly be put to death. That goes right along with commandment number five. And it also talks about thou shall not kill, right? Honor your mother and your father and thou shall not kill. Come on, y'all. This is supporting the 10 that he's already spoken. Verse 16. And he who kidnaps a man and sells him, or if he is found in his hands, shall certainly be put to death. Now he is talking about slavery right here. What has happened to many who have been put on slave ships and brought here to America and forced to work for free? That's what Abba is against. Please believe Abba is going to pay them back for that. Let's go to chapter 22 and let's see some more examples of what is supporting the 10. Some more laws. Right here, verse 1. When a man steals an ox or a sheep and shall slaughter it or sell it, he repays five cattle for an ox or four sheep for a sheep. Do you see this? He's saying, if you break my law and you steal from your neighbor, you will pay back five times as much. Now we see litigation. The best lawyers are Yehudim. Oh yeah. If I ever got in a bind, please believe me because they've been reading this since they were children. I wouldn't hire no one else. Verse two, if a thief is found breaking in and he is smitten so that he dies, there is no guilt for his bloodshed because his intention was to come in and steal. And you didn't know whether or not he was coming to take your life. So you guarded your life. He says, there's no blood guilt for that. Come on. He means what he says, y'all. You break his righteous laws, you pay. Sometimes you pay with your resources and sometimes you pay with your own life. It's too expensive. Stop playing games with Elohim. Let me clarify this one more time in case you haven't heard me already. The blood of Christ does not give you permission to not obey the Father. That needs to be understood crystal clear. Oh, I got a good one, y'all. Let's go to verse 16. Let's have some fun with it. 
And when a man entices a maiden who is not engaged and lies with her, he shall certainly pay the bride price for her to be his wife. He says, honey, you want to put your hands in the cookie jar? You want to take a bite of the cookie? You're going to pay for that cookie. You are going to pay for playing in the cookie jar. Verse 17 and if her father absolutely refuses to give her to him, he pays according to the bride price of maidens. He says, whether you liked it or not, and whether the father says you can have her or not, you're going to pay for her regardless, honey. So stop trying to sneak around and milk the cow and not try to pay for it. You're going to pay for the milk and the cookies. I'm going to continue reading from verse 17 all the way through, and I'll tell you when I stop. Do not allow a practicer of witchcraft to live. Anyone lying with a beast shall certainly be put to death. Bestiality. Why is he telling them do not do these things? Because in Egypt, that was a practice. He had to show them that there's a better way. Verse 20. He who slaughters to a mighty one except to Yahuwah only is put under a ban. That goes with the command of do not commit adultery because Israel is about to become his wife. And he's saying, if you slaughter to any other God, you're committing adultery on me. Verse 21, do not tread down a sojourner or oppress him for you were sojourners in the land of Mitzrayim. He's telling them because many Egyptians came along with them and he knew that there are several Hebrews who probably wanted to pay them back, right? He's like, no, no ma'am, no sir. They've been grafted in. My ways are higher. You do not oppress because you have been oppressed. You lead with love. That's my command. Are you starting to see that his laws are love? Let's keep reading, y'all. Verse 22. Do not afflict any widow or a fatherless child. If you do afflict them at all, and if they cry out to me at all, I shall certainly hear their cry, and my wrath shall burn, and I shall slay you with the sword. Your wives shall become widows, and your children shall become fatherless. Do you see how he ain't playing games? He is not playing games about these children, and he is not playing games about widows. Women who lost their husbands had no covering. Yes, all of these laws are laws of love to protect and guard life. Open your eyes, child of Elohim. All right, so I went through enough examples in chapter 22. Now let's roll into chapter 23 and read a few examples. I'll start right here at verse 7. Keep yourself far from a false matter and do not kill the innocent and the righteous, for I do not declare the wicked right. Thou shall not kill and thou shall not lie. He says, don't kill the innocent. So is the heavenly father okay with these abortion clinics? No, he is not. He says for every being before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. He knew the plans that he had for each and every one of those children. But man put his hand and said, I have a different plan. He's not playing games, y'all. I'm going to read verses 9 through 11. And I want you to see just how much he cares for the outsiders. And do not oppress a sojourner, as you yourselves know the life of a sojourner, because you were sojourners in the land of Mitzrayim. And for six years you are to sow in your land, and shall gather its increase. But on the seventh year you are to let it rest, and you shall leave it, and to the poor your people shall eat it. And the beasts of the fields shall eat what is left. Do the same with your vineyard and your olive yard." Doesn't Messiah say that the poor is always among you? So on the Sabbath year, you let it rest so that it takes care of those who have nothing. Verse 12, six days you are to do your work and on the seventh day you rest. He is commanding to rest. The Sabbath, the fourth commandment, he is reiterating it here. And he says, it's not only for you, it's for your animals. It's for everything. Everything gets a chance to rest. We follow the pattern of our father. If we go day to day to day and we don't rest, our body will make us rest. Our bodies will rebel against us and cause us to sat down somewhere. And yes, y'all, I'm country. I know that it's sit down, but I'm echoing the words of my grandma Eloise, sat down somewhere, okay? So if we continue reading, we see that our Elohim commands them to keep three festivals, that they are to go up, make Aliyah, go up to participate in these festivals. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of First Fruits, and the Feast of Latter Fruits, which is Tabernacles, the seventh biblical feast. Once we get to Leviticus, then I will break down the biblical feasts and how they point to Christ. But for now, I will tell you, if you're looking for a resource, 
please check out this book. It's God's Appointed Times by Barney Kasdan. This will help you connect the dots. All right, now let's read verse 20. See, I am sending a messenger before you to guard you in the way and to bring you into the place that I have prepared. He is talking about Canaan, the land of Canaan, the promised land. Verse 21, be on guard before him and obey his voice. Do not rebel against him for he is not going to pardon your transgression for my name is in him. But if you diligently obey his voice and shall do all that I speak, then I shall be an enemy to your enemies and a disaster to those who distress you. Verse 24, do not bow down to their mighty ones, nor serve them, nor do according to their works, but without fail, overthrow them and without fail, break down their pillars. He's saying break down their altars. Verse 25, and you shall serve Yahuwah your Elohim, and he shall bless your bread and your water, and I shall remove sickness from your midst. Verse 27. And I shall send my fear before you and cause confusion among the people to whom you come, and make all your enemies turn their backs to you. So he goes on to explain when you enter into this promised land, he says, Do not make a covenant with them, nor with their mighty ones. Verse 33. Let them not dwell in your land, lest they make you sin against me when you serve their mighty ones, when it becomes a snare to you. He does not want the children of Israel to try to emulate the world. Same goes for us now. He wants us to learn as much as we possibly can about his kingdom, kingdom principles, learn about his right rulings, learn about his laws. He does not want us to worship him in the way of the pagans. He says, do not ask how they serve their gods. But there's so many who call themselves followers of Christ that follow Hinduism, that follow horoscopes, they follow celebrities, they follow everyone else but Christ. Christ follows the Father. So guess what? If we're following Christ, we're going closer and closer to the Father, not away from him. If you're saying, I don't know how to do this quite yet, hold on, stick around, Pray to the Father, ask him for revelation, ask him for wisdom. That's where it comes from. It doesn't come from anyone else. I'm a vessel that can help you to realize these things, but it only comes from the Father. All right, y'all, I'm closing out the chapter and I made a mistake and said that yesterday, today would be the day that they're sealing this covenant in blood. That actually happens tomorrow. So sorry for that little boo-boo. Deep and Ward family, I hope that your eyes are opening to see that his right rulings, his laws are actually to protect and guard our lives. They are laws of love. That is all that I have for you today. Until tomorrow, Yah bless.